welcome to episode 40. Oh my god, 40 of these things I've made. Episode 40 of the Knitting Nurse Podcast. My name is Jasmine and I'll be your host today. Today is Thursday, February 18th, 17th. Because hmm. Monday was Valentine's Day. Tuesday was the 15th. Wednesday is 17. Okay, yeah, so today is the 18th. <laughs> oh, I'm, it's like during my, you know, during the weeks that I am not like at work, work, I am, time means nothing. Time is meaningless. It does not matter to me. So I kind of have a hard, have a hard time keeping track of the days, but we're here to talk about knitting. This is a weekly knitting podcast where I talk about my knitting and also some cross stitch quite a bit of cross stitch that's like half of my crafty time basically um but the cross stitch stuff is at the end so if you want to see the cross stitch you can skip ahead or just stay tuned and we will talk about that because i have some things <laughs> i have some things to talk about today so first, um, for knitting, I'm just going to pull this out because it's what I am holding this project in. I'm trying to make sure I don't show it. So uh, this year, I am doing um, Whip Go, and it is the brainchild of Jessie Marie Does Stuff. She is a floss tuber here on YouTube. And she um, is basically like the the mastermind behind this whole thing. <laughs> she um, is basically a game, a year long game. You make a bingo board of all of your whips or works in progress. Um, and every month she calls two random numbers and whatever like box that those numbers are that have that particular project in, those are the two projects that you focus on for that month. and. Basically, you would set a goal um, on each of those projects that you would have to meet in order to, you know, fill it in and eventually get a bingo. And you can get a prize for meeting your goal. You can give yourself a prize for making a bingo or getting a blackout or whatever. It's all up to you. But I have a Whipco board for both my knitting and my cross stitch. And... Uh, this last month I met both of my Whipco goals. It was just to finish my advent projects, which I did. Um, I did not like finish, finish them. I have not washed and blocked them quite yet, but I still consider them done. Once the knitting's done and it's off the needles, I consider the project basically finished. Um, so I made my first Whipco for February. I did it. I knit an entire garment in the shortest month of the year in like a little over two weeks. So I finished this on Tuesday, like early Wednesday or Tuesday morning. And this is my petal party crop. Look how gorgeous she is. Ignore the ends, <laughs> please. But this is the petal party crop. I don't remember the designer's name. I really should write these things down or look them up, but this is it and it's done when I picked this thing up at the beginning of the month I only had like maybe two or three inches of the back panel complete so basically it was just cat it was like barely cast on and then I um and then I put it down I put it away and never touched it again for a long time <laughs> but um this is a short sleeved drop shoulder crop top with four lace panels, two in the front and two in the back. And all the lace is knit identically. So um, it's like a lace repeat that all, they all go in the same direction, which is super, super fun. And it was such a fun knit. I love this lace and I finished the ribbing. I got the, so I got the garment down to a um, comfortable like cropped length. And I did add in like the length of the ribbing um, when I tried it on. And I did, it calls for a one by one rib, 
in a smaller needle but I don't like that cinched in look of ripping on sweaters so I kept my same needle size and I did a one by one twisted rib and I think it looks just much cleaner than my regular ribbing especially since this is cotton yarn so it kind of um drapes a bit and isn't always the most even and then for the ribbing in the sleeves I did end up using um a smaller needle because the sleeves are meant to be a little more fitted and I kind of like that they're cinched in like that and yeah I mean most of the ends have been woven in except for the bind off and the cast yeah except for the bind offs um, the ends are basically woven in. I woven almost all of my ends as I went and um, the top, the collar of the of the shirt is um, a stockinette folded over collar and I just did a regular bind off for that. I'm hoping I will not regret doing that. I mean if if worse comes to worse I can um rip it out and start over because I just picked up the stitches along the neckline but it's done it's finally finally finished so the yarn that I used um I'm like further away from my <laughs> yarn wall so I have to like reach behind me to grab it <laughs> Okay, so the yarn that I used is this yarn that I bought from Hobie. I originally intended to knit a different pattern with this, but I instead went with the Petal Party Crop. So um, I have quite a bit of yarn left over. This is the We Love Yarn, like, line or brand or whatever. And it's 100% um, cotton, fingering weight, in the color 19. And I have five, these are 50 gram balls. Um, so I have five of these and like 25 grams of another ball that I finished <laughs> the sweater with. So I have quite a bit of yarn left. I think I bought 12 originally. I bought 10 or 12 originally. So I used like about half either way. And I don't know what to do with the rest of it. I honestly... I don't see myself using this yarn again so I'm probably going to throw it in a bag and donate it to Goodwill um because I don't know I cotton yarn is not my favorite to work with but I didn't want to knit a short sleeve top with cotton because um the lace looks really nice it's super drapey as you can tell and it's not blocked or washed or anything sorry my nose is itchy uh, it has not been washed or blocked or anything and it's still like super drapey the lace is really defined and um i typically even with like regular crew neck sweaters as you can see um i typically wear a t-shirt under my sweaters and i'm not going to wear a t-shirt underneath this most likely uh, i'm probably just going to wear like a cute like lacy bralette or something underneath it so that the lace can like really shine and like it's a crop top it's meant to be I don't know I would wear like a t-shirt like this like on its own touching my bare skin so I want it to be made out of something that I can easily clean and cotton is easiest choice so that is done for the most part I have to weave in just a couple of ends and wash it and block it and then it will be ready to wear in the summer. So excited. Which means, and I focused on that for like the last week. I didn't really work on much of anything else. So I got back to working on my second whip go call. And this is in this super cute bag that I got from my Yarnable box. One of them, I don't remember which one it was. Um, but this is my Stephen West, ugh, this is my Stephen West Slippy V Crescent Shawl. And I did put this on bigger needles, my 60 inch needle, so that like it's a lot easier to knit and you can really see it shine. Oh my gosh, this looks so good. Um, so yeah, this is Stephen West Slippy V Crescent and I did one like repeat of the three 
um of like the three like the, they're called like main colors two through four so I guess I did one repeat of that and I'm on to the second repeat and each of these stripes are going to there's going to be four of each of these stripes in the pattern I might add a couple I don't know maybe like I love really like big deep shawls <laughs> so who knows um once I get to the end I'll see how much yarn I have left and figure out where to go from there um but this is such a nice like soothing knit the, the rows are just really long as you can tell like this is a 60 inch cord and like there is still some room for this to really stretch and it's only going to get bigger from here. Um, so I bought this yarn as a like kit from Stephen and Penelope. Um, like for this pattern, it came with the pattern and the yarn and what have you. <laughs> so this is the Wandering Flock. I can't tell you what colors they all are because the tags are inside the balls. Uh, just so I wouldn't lose them but so I can just tell you what color is which in the pattern as I'm knitting them up so where is it so this like mauvey where is it why is it doing that okay <laughs> so this like mauvey color is um the color that I knit for like the big like slip stitch section here not slip stitch the big like short row triangle uh in the center that's like my main color one and then main color two is this white that i have gotten back to it's like it's not bare but it's like it's like a bare base with some really delicate speckles um main color two is this like kind of rose gold like pinky color with these neon pink speckles And then the main color three is this tonal um, burgundy color. Or main color four is the tonal burgundy color. And then the contrasting color is the mohair. And I know this one. This is just neon pink. And it's like a tonal hot pink color. I love the Watering Flock. I've been following them on Instagram and their yarns are gorgeous um a lot of the colors that I that really caught my eye are what I can just what I can only describe as like pastel neons and if you go to their Etsy shop or I don't know if they have a website but if you like look at their work you will know what I mean <laughs> so there's just one color that I really want a sweater quantity of but it's out of stock I keep meaning to email them and ask if they plan on dyeing it again or if it was limited or if they've like discontinued it or something but I need it like ASAP <laughs> uh so surprisingly oh I actually dang I did get new yarn uh yeah I I bought more yarn but it's for a good cause <laughs> um well let me turn around and <laughs> grab it really fast I'll be right back <laughs> Okay, so I got a little bit of haul, but it's all from Knit Picks. So the first thing that came, so, okay, I really needed more size five nickel plated needle tips. And I love the ones from Knit Picks. I know that they, that the thread um, to screw into the cord fits into all of the cords that I own. So I figured I'd just be safe. I was not going to go on Amazon and buy some cheap ones. I was going to go to Knit Picks and get some because they have been on sale for a while. They're like 20% off for all their nickel plated needles. But I did not want them to travel. I got three sets. <laughs> I got three pairs, but I didn't want them to travel all by their lonesome because like, I don't know, it's only 15 bucks. So I figured I might as well get a little something. And I have been eyeing the Knit Picks Dishy to knit myself some dish towel, some hand towels. Um, so I got these. I got, um, these are just two of the colors that I bought. Um, this one is coral. These are worsted white cottons. This one is coral or conch. I keep saying it's coral, but, uh, this one is conch and this one is just white. And 
I got, um, I also got two balls of the conch twist and I got two balls of starfish, which is like a more variegated color. So I am hoping that I can make a few <laughs> hand towels for my kitchen and my bathrooms because I don't have enough. Um, in my last apartment, I did have enough because I had one kitchen and one bathroom and I only needed two towels at a time and I had three. <laughs> so um, I really need more and I thought, well, what if I just knit some? Like I could knit a, like a basic garter stitch um, hand towel with like the dishy held double and it would be fantastic. <laughs> so that is the plan with these. And I plan on, um, I plan on like combining the colors a certain way and following the pattern that Netpicks provides. I believe it's a free pattern um, for the dishy specifically. Where'd it go? Where'd my yarn go? Oh. Okay. Whew. <sighs> thought I thought we were gonna have an emergency there. Okay, also in a separate order, because I bought these, I realized I needed these after I placed the dishy order. Um, I found, oh my God, what is the pattern? It's by Rasta Shu. Um, and it's like the his long, like his long rectangular scarf that's knit like lengthwise uh, with the mosaic knitting, that one. Um, I want to knit that. <laughs> so I decided to get two solid colors of yarn from Knit Picks. I got their palette yarn because I want this to be warm. <laughs> and I wanted um, some earth tones. So of course I had to do a pink earth tone. This is like a, like a uh, dusty rose. It's called Tea Rose. Love these dusty pinks. Um, I think that like these dusty pink colors are neutrals <laughs> pink is a neutral okay and then the other color i got is almond uh which is kind of ironic ironic because i'm allergic to almonds but i love this beige i kind of want a sweater in this maybe not a sweater i don't know if it would go great with like rest of my skin and an entire sweater but i think it looks really nice and i wanted like kind of a, a relatively low contrast so I think these would look amazing together I thought about doing this pink um this like dusty pink with like a really dark brown but I went with like a, t a more tan color because I thought a, a low con I was I don't know I've been feeling low contrast lately who would have known <laughs> but that's all in my haul <laughs> I do have I did pre-order some yarn from the Wicked Nitta on Instagram she's the Wicked Nitta on Instagram and she recently put up a few previously retired colorways for pre-order they will be shipping in March and there's this one color that I saw when she released it and I was sad when she discontinued it because I did not get a chance to buy any and as soon as I saw that she was re-releasing it as a pre-order I jumped at the chance it's, the colorway is ember and I will show you when it gets here I got three skeins of single ply because I'm going to knit the radiata shawl I own the pattern I planned on knitting it in a DK weight uh, yarn that a different like yarn that is DK weight but instead I'm going to knit it in fingering weight um with a single ply oh, I'm so excited it's like a very beautiful like lace crescent shaped shawl it's it's so gorgeous I cannot wait to knit this <laughs> um and I think it'll look fantastic in the ember colorway okay I have to stop like getting too excited about yarn huh <laughs> But um, 
that's all the knitting I really have to show you I, again I had therapy yesterday so I knit on my therapy socks but I only get about like 20 rows in like 15 or 20 rounds in an hour session so um, hopefully in a couple of weeks I'll have finished socks or maybe I'll have finished socks a little bit sooner because I have gotten back into reading while I knit on socks. Um, I've been knitting uh, I've been knitting on socks while reading One of Us is Lying and it recently got turned into a TV series on Peacock but it was a book series originally and I am so excited. I am sometimes I just really need like a fast like a fast paced um high stakes like thriller murder mystery um especially one with an unreliable narrator oh my gosh <sighs> yes please I need sometimes I just need something to keep me on my toes I generally gravitate towards like you know young adult romance or like new adult romance just like real steamy <laughs> spicy spicy books and sometimes I just need something a little more unpredictable like I keep guessing at who who I keep guessing who done it and I keep changing my guess because I just I don't know and it's making me very excited <laughs> I want to read it now that I'm talking about it but um I'm going to clean up my mess all this yarn and put it away and grab my cross stitch because I have a new start to show you so I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> so I think first I'm gonna show you all the whip that you have seen every week this year. That is The Beast. It is super size max color, a stitching shelf. Artwork is by Amy Stewart, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. And I'm still on this third page down here. And I have a needle sticking out. Wonderful. Oh, there's like still thread on it too. Okay, well, that's fine. Um, and yeah, I guess this is where we're at. You might knit, you may or may not notice that the greenery is a little bit more filled in. I did um, a lot of the green. I think I, there was one point when I stitched like 1100 stitches in a day. Like, what? But that's because, that's mainly because um, I did like, there's one green color that is like very prominent, like all in this greenery. So that's why. Um, and right now I'm still kind of like picking a color and finishing it off on the page, parking it over here and still doing my normal thing. I think this is gonna look pretty much the same until I finish the page. Um, this white space here is gonna be like a blue lantern and I don't really know what the other white spaces are going to be. So we shall see. But there isn't too much, like too much new stuff to look at with that. Which is why I wanted to show it first. So next I worked on, um, I decided to pull out the piece that I had planned for Black History Month. And that is Christine, the Arctic Ocean Mermaid. Um, she is charted by I must have heaven and earth designs. She's chartered by Meridian Designs. And this is what she will look like completed. The cover page, isn't she gorgeous? She's like a black, a dark skinned, black, chubby mermaid. Love her so, so, so much. And I, ended up, I got the embellishment pack for her, so I, she's fully kitted out. Um, I'm stitching her on 32 count. I think this is called Enchanted Linen from To Die For Fabrics. And last time you saw her, she looked like nightmare fuel, only part of her face. I can't really fully see. Okay. Only part of her face was like actually filled in. Um, so she looked kind of scary. Oh my gosh. <laughs> She looked kind of scary, but now all of her skin is done, all of her hair is done, and all of the back stitch is done. Because all the back stitch is in her skin and hair. <laughs> but um isn't she gorgeous? She's so 
she is just too beautiful for words like you you probably can't see in the camera but she like there's a lot of um crinic in her hair the back stitch in her crown is crinic um the shading in her skin is fantastic it's just amazing work and yeah i got like all of this like um all these blended threads in her like boob covers done like oh my god i think all that's left like up in her top half is beading which is so super exciting and i do have to finish these crinic icicles on the top border um because i was just using those to hop skip and jump my way over to actually stitching on her and oh my god oh she is just amazing 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 and i love her to death love her to death. I can't wait to get back to oh this is actually like a much more concise uh view of her because I haven't really done any of her tail I think I'll do that I mean obviously I'll do that next when I pick her up again but oh, she's so beautiful I do really wish that I had done her want her skin one over one because I think like her the shading in her skin would really lend itself to a one over one but me I stitched her she started so that's the next best thing <laughs> but I love the look of one over one skin Ugh. or like since this is 32 count linen I would probably do two over one tent for her skin because that is still like very smooth to me but you know maybe the next fancy lady I do have another one fully kitted up so maybe next time okay as long as there's a stitch marker on my needle minder hmm. okay so next I started for so my friend Jesse is hosting February aviary which is where you stitch birds in February because birds uh, fun fact, I am terrified of birds. I hate them. <laughs> but this is a really fun event, and there are lots of cross-stitch patterns with birds in them. One of which is this one. Can't see any birds, but I assure you, there are birds in it. <laughs> this is um, Long Dog Sampler's New Normal. I've been wanting to start this for a few months now. Um... And I'm stitching this on 40 count B Stitch Me's Spectrum fabric. And I'm using Silks for You floss. I think it's their equivalent of DMC 939. And uh, you can, so, okay. So this is like, I don't know, a few hundred stitches over here. Because I originally had my fabric oriented this way. And because I was not paying attention to the dimensions of the pattern. So um, I had it oriented wrong. <laughs> it's taller than it is long, so it should have been this way. Like, cause it's, you know, goes this, it goes like this. Um, and so I had to frog like these stitch, all of these stitches here that I originally did um, when it was oriented the wrong way and start it over <laughs> um but this is like two lengths of the silk floss and i don't have the floss oh yes i do um i bought a full hank of the floss so this is it right here you can see i wanted like a dark i had this planned for a while like as soon as i saw this fabric on Be Stitch Me's website. I knew exactly oh, what I was going to do with it. I was going to stitch a long dog on it with a dark colored silk because who doesn't want to stitch an entire long dog in silk? No one. So I'm, I'm doing it <laughs> and I love it. I'm in love with the silk. I'm in love with the pattern. I'm in love with the fabric. This fabric is probably my best idea to date. <laughs> like, oh my goodness. Because a lot of the actual 
pattern, like Long Dog tends to design a lot of their motifs in the negative space. So you stitch, um, you stitch like around the actual design, which is just super fun and super cool. So um, once I get this bubble done here, it is going to look amazing. This is the bubble with the lion because it's like the center stitch is like right here. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Which is why I kept it in the Q-snap um, because even though it doesn't fit in my project bag, I do intend on picking this back up again once I catch up on my stitching shelf. So, y'all want to see what I bought? Let me try to get this back in the bag. Along with the floss. <laughs> Okay, y'all want to see what I bought? I got a couple things. So I have been, most of you know, year in the woods, my cottage garden samplings. I got the first two because they were finally in stock. The patterns and the fabric that I wanted were finally in stock at the same time. So I got, um... I got the fox and the swans. Fox and the swans. And as you can see, I already made copies of the patterns. And they're, you know, in here. And I cannot wait to start these. These are not nearly as big as I thought that they would be. Um, excuse me. They are pretty dense stitching but it's only five by six and a half inches on 40 count, which is the fabric that I'm stitching them on. And I also found out that uh, this is like an eighth of fabric and I got two of them because I got two of the patterns, but really this will, like each of them will fit on a 16th of fabric. So they will each fit like, you know, height wise on one half of an eighth which is super duper cool. So I I think for the rest of the, cause they're all meant to be, there's like, okay, there's 12 of them and they're grouped into like, into, into four groups of three. And um, each group is meant to be stitched on the same count fabric, like kind of with the seasons. So um, this color is like the winter color for months 12, one and two, and then months two, or months um, three, four and five are meant to be stitched on like a dirtier, like more tan fabric. And I really want to stitch them on pictures plus ancient, but I cannot find it anywhere. Well, I shouldn't say anywhere. I only looked on um, one, two, three stitch, <laughs> but I, I, it's like, it has been out of stock forever. So I don't know when because the jackrabbit is out and it's meant to be stitched on that color fabric but um for the rest of the fabrics that i need i can just stitch i could just buy a quarter of fabric and cut it into 16 and still even have some left over so that is exciting and i did end up getting both um gassed gentle arts threads for each pattern well okay so i only got the colored gentle arts threads for each pattern i did not get the um the white the chalk i'm just going to use 3865 because i have copious amounts but both of them are kitted up i probably should have some of the there's two of a few of these colors so i probably don't need that much for these since i'm only doing one strand of floss on 40 count oh i didn't even talk about the fabric um this is 40 count picture this plus nocturne look how pretty that is i want more of this this is such a pretty like moody fabric I don't know why picture this plus does some of the best like dark fabrics I've seen. Okay, so that's year in the woods, at least the first two. <laughs> um, and so I had to the swans calls for um 
Gentle Arts Creation Gold, but I one, two, three stitch was out of stock and I really wanted to place my order before <clears throat> the charts or the fabric or everything went out of stock immediately. So um, I placed my order and went on the hunt for Grecian gold elsewhere and I bought it from X Stitch Express. Um, but I couldn't just buy the floss and Glendon Place patterns were on sale. So I bought three of them. I bought, <laughs> so um, I got, uh, the bird of paradise mandala and if it was any other time i would kit this up and start it february because bird of paradise jesse and if that doesn't count then there are hummingbirds in the corners <laughs> um and this is just super super pretty love it i also got the sunflower mandala which is just gorgeous and I think all of Glendon Place patterns use um, dinky dye silks, which is just so nice and luxurious. I am kitting them up in dinky dyes. And I really love their um, amazing desserts collection, but I really wanted a pink one. So I got Cherries Jubilee. I don't love cherries, but I love the look of this. I thought about getting baked a lot. I thought about copying Rachel, Rachel Ray and getting baked Alaska, but I don't love the look of those like full coverage mandalas. <laughs> um, so instead I got a more like mandala mandala. And I'm excited. Don't know when I'm going to start these, but I couldn't let one single skin of floss travel all by its lonesome. Needed some company. So I gave it company. <laughs> um, plus, I think, I don't know if they offered free shipping. I don't remember. I don't remember if they offered free shipping. Probably not. Because I would have known. Because that would have been my excuse. But no, I just bought these to buy them. Because, I don't know, I felt weird just buying a single skein of floss. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's everything. I think so. We'll call that that <laughs> for now. Um, I really hope that you all enjoyed this video and you all enjoyed my ramblings and um, I hope you find joy in everything you're working on and I will see you all next Saturday. Bye! <laughs>